ladies, throughout the lessons, we get super excited sometimes. I think we might have scared them a little bit. Yeah, this, all of our passion comes yes. from this. The passion comes from the fact that number one, we've been doing this for 85 years. Now, some of you are confused because we're 26, 27, 29 years old, so the math doesn't really add up. But we've had, we have stories from 60 years ago. Oh yeah. There's stories about how my father or our, our grandfather, how he saved someone and they taught someone and they used the techniques and it saved their life. Our friend has been doing it for three generations and as much as we don't like to admit it, we were conceived to be here teaching jujitsu, empowering other people, and uh, we would like to be no do nothing else. Now, we have stories. Women have learned these techniques and have used them. So of course, we're gonna be passionate about sharing them with other people. There was a very memorable story about a, a woman who completed the course, the Women Empowered course, here at the Gracie Academy. She's a resident in San Diego, in Southern California, and after completing the course, about six months after the course was complete, she came back to the academy to tell us a story, to tell us what happened. She was jogging in the park. Midday, one o'clock in the afternoon, and usually she jogs with a friend, her and her girlfriend jogging together. But that day her friend couldn't make the jog for whatever reason. So she was by herself, wearing little jogging shorts and a tank top. A very petite woman, maybe 100, 105 pounds max, five foot one. She's jogging to the park on a, on a trail, right? The pathway they have in the park. And as she is jogging on this trail, she approaches a big fixture of like a bush slash, you know, garden fixture. And as she's jogging past this large bush, just before she passed it, the man from behind the bush jumps out onto the pathway in front of her. Literally materializes and is so close to her, is literally face to face by the time she sees him and he appears. Now the problem is the guy is standing there, six foot, 190 pounds, wearing tennis shoes and nothing else. He's 100% naked in the middle of the park. Now, this probably means there weren't a lot of people around. It was a pretty empty day at the park, but there she is in front of the guy, right before her eyes, and she recalled to us that at that moment, she swung full blast for the guy's face. And she connected. She hit him right in the cheekbone here. She didn't even use a slap. Yes. She used the punch. Which at that moment was just more reflexive, more instinctive for her. So she, yeah, exactly. She made that fist and she delivered. And she told us, she said, guys, the punch, he didn't even flinch from the punch in the face. <laughs> then she said, uh-oh, this that didn't work. So after she connected, the guy just kind of, boom, took it, no problem. He embraced her, he hugged her by the waist, he got a control of her body, he laid her down, and he found himself inside her legs, in the guard, as those of you who've done the techniques know. He's inside her guard, his head is buried in her chest, and he's trapping her hips. The lady is going frantic, going crazy, naturally. And at that point, she felt herself start to exhaust a little bit. She realized that he wasn't gonna budge. And at that, at that moment, in the trap situation, she recalled to us that she remembered hearing my father's voice saying, relax and breathe. And at that point, she just stopped moving and she took a breath. The attacker at that moment thought she had given up. So she didn't even say it. Yeah, she didn't even, please don't hurt me, I give up. There was no need for that. But she said it physically because when she had the foresight to just, <sighs> he, of course, when she went limp, her body, yeah. He thought she had given up. So at that point, from the buried position, he looked up to say, wow, I got it. Game over, I can move on to phase four. Because he was already in phase three, right? The exhaustion phase. He identified her, he subdued her, he was inside her guard exhausting her, and she went limp. He accomplished phase three. So now, she's exhausted, he thinks she's exhausted, he thinks she had given up, and then when he looked up from here to see what's going on, she hit him with a strike instinctively, just hit the guy, which pulled his hands up to address the strike. And of course, in pulling the hands up, he had to let go of her hips. She scooted her hips out, placed the foot on the stomach, kicked herself away, got up in base, and was gone. It saved her life. So first things first, when we're passionate about sharing these techniques with you guys, now you know why. Yep. Because of stories like this, and a few others that have happened for, for women who've done the classes and of course had to use the techniques. Now, what are the key things we need to take from this story? One is that even in the middle of the day, you right. can be attacked, right? There's no, there's no midnight only when it's dark in a back alley. This is in a park yeah. in the middle of the day. Right, if someone is a sexual predator or a rapist, 
some screws are loose, you know, and, and, and something is, is, not, is not right, you know. And if something isn't right, that means they don't have the, 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 most, the most effective rationale, right? So for them, someone to attack someone completely naked in the middle of a park, in the middle of the day, you have to be a little right. bit crazy. But guess what? They're out there. Yes. And for them, you have to always be ready. You can never let your guard down. It's a perfect time to recap the four phases of sexual assault. Phase one, they have to identify an unsuspecting target. He's probably seen her running there before. Yeah. Right? She probably runs that track on a regular basis. Which she told us she did, but she didn't recall seeing this guy before. No, of course not. You never notice him. Yeah. Unless it's someone you know already. Unless it's a non-stranger attack, which we're going to talk about later. You never see that coming anyways. 10-4. So she's running the track every week, every weekend, and he just notices. Absolutely. So he certainly identified his unsuspecting target. Phase two. They have to subdue you. Okay? They have to get control of you. And of course, all the techniques in the course that we went through, the wrist releases, the front choke defense, the stop block frame, even the strikes, the super slap standing up, the, the choke defense against the wall, all these techniques where they can grab you and you're breaking free, the base, the push, the pull, are all to designed to neutralize or keep you safe during st phase two when he's trying to subdue you. So those are phase two. Now you can use, in addition to what we showed you, anything else you use, there's no right and wrong. Yeah, she did a punch. She punched him. Punches. It didn't work as effectively in that moment, but if she hit someone else in a different way, it could have worked. Eye gouge, kick to the groin, yeah. anything to avoid getting grabbed in phase two is effort well spent. The slap might have possibly distracted him a little more. Yeah, if it landed if perfect. If it hit the ear nicely, but it doesn't matter. A punch is fine. Anything you do to avoid being controlled or grabbed is effort well spent and highly recommended. And you're gonna follow your instincts. We just try to give you some that are the most reliable for the most common situations, and, and that's what we did in the 15 lessons. So just go crazy, basically. Don't get grabbed. Don't go to the ground, just break Keep free. your distance and move. And of course, phase three, when they wanna get you to the ground. Normally, phase three is the, is the process of controlling you to the ground and exhausting your energy while you fight. He knows you're gonna panic. He expects you to panic. He hopes you panic and go crazy a little bit so he can impose his power and show the control. And most likely you will panic because you're so into phase two where you're going crazy. Right. That when phase three happens, you're still a little bit attached to that phase two, you know, During phase three, the, the attacker wants to get you to the ground and wants to exhaust you physically and mentally. So if he gets you to the ground and you fight wildly and he has you trapped, he really has you trapped, the phase two fight for your life mindset can serve as a disservice to you because if you keep going crazy on the ground while he has you trapped, you're just going to speed up the exhaustion rate, which will put you right into the phase four, which is execute the sexual assault. Right at the same time, there's value in giving a little bit of craziness in phase three, maybe for like five, eight seconds. For a couple reasons. Because it's only normal and it's going to make him feel like you actually got exhausted. Correct. It's part of the act. It's Absolutely. part of the life. And it's possible that when he gets you in phase three on the ground, when he has you trapped and is trying to exhaust you, that he doesn't hold you as well as he should. So when you make your move, you actually get out. So you got to be sure that you're trapped. Yes. And if you are trapped for sure, the first thing you have to do is relax and take a deep breath. And then say, okay, I give up. I'll do whatever you want. Which is a lie, but we do it. He looks up, he changes his grip, he goes to advance to undress you, and out you go. Phase three, yeah. the most important thing is the false surrender. To get yourself to give up, even though you have all these techniques piled up, waiting to be implemented, and to, of course, help you escape to freedom. It's possible in phase three that you, you lie, he loosens up his grip, you start to escape, he holds you back down again. Oh yeah. You do it again, phase three continues. Hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And you lie, you keep going. It's and he'll the, forgive you that easily. Absolutely. And there will be another window guaranteed. Phase two is somewhat of a, a natural behavior for women. To fight for your life and to fight and to fight and to let them grab you. It makes sense. Phase three, if there's going to be a challenge, if you're going to if you're going to have difficulty, it's going to be getting yourself to calm down, to let him think that you've given up. And that has to happen before you have actually given up and exhausted. Because if you waste all your energy fighting, 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 and he has you trapped, guess what? When the window opens for your escape, you have no energy left to make it happen. Absolutely critical. Ladies, all these techniques are incredible. Phase two, self-defense, on the ground, trap and roll, guard, get up. The fact that you know these, total empowerment, wonderful. However, your best line of defense is your increased level of awareness. It's the triangle of victimization. We already talked about it. 
in order for a sexual assault to take place, we need three things. A predator, a target, and opportunity. You can be on the street corner having a conversation with the sexual predator you've been reading about for the last six months. But it's a coffee store and there's 30 people around you. And you have nothing to worry about. You're safe. But when you leave your store, when you leave the coffee shop, you walk out through the alley and not through the main street. Stay aware. Just be aware. And if you ever do find yourself in a dark alley or in a parking lot, that's when that awareness, because the opportunity is there. Right. So keep your eyes open for the predator, right? Versus just walking, not paying attention. You're just looking for someone that might possibly want to challenge you. You're aware. That's all that matters. Ladies, you have the techniques, you have the awareness. Stay focused, stay safe, and everything's going to be just fine.